a few years ago, a guy posted a blog with the title, Why is, why is President Obama trying to make America like Sweden when Swedes trying to be less like Sweden? A very good question. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Baraba Isa. I'm 23 years old and I study industrial engineering. During my years in college, I studied seven subjects, only in math. And without lying, I was confused about what we are learning. Until I started reading a book, a book about how not to be wrong, the hidden math of everyday life. Let's get back to the question. Why is America trying to be like Sweden when Sweden trying to be less like Sweden? To answer that question, we will need a scientific mathematical chart. As we see here in this graph, we have in the x-axis the uh, Swedishness, and the y-axis is the prosperity. And this kind of uh, mentality can only be explained by a line, which is something we call in math uh, a linear problem. So his argument was, why is America trying to move down this line to become more Swedish and get less prosperity, while Sweden trying to move up, to which become less Swedish and get high amount of, uh, high amount of prosperity? This was his point of view. But let me show you the same problem from another point of view, like what uh, economic and President Obama had in his mind. President Obama can uh, show it, show this, uh, saw this problem as, as a curve. It's not a line. It's something we call a nonlinear problem. Much more complicated, but it will be exp uh, explained by a curve. As we see here, for Sweden, to get the highest amount of prosperity, it should move, it should move up to that curve and uh, to become more, uh, less Swedish, and for America to become more Swedish to also to reach the highest amount of prosperity. These are two different points of view. And it's not my job to define who's right and who's wrong. It is only a, a matter of who did the math correctly. Is it a linear problem, like what the blogger uh, saw it? Or is it a nonlinear problem? like what, what the President Obama claimed. I believe that I cannot make you understand math without involving you with me in this process. So let's just have an example. Imagine that I just bought an island, and I will call it uh, UJ Island, and I'll be the king, and you guys will help me uh, manage this island as my consulates. So first question, what do we need to provide to our people to help us build this island? What, is, what are the basic needs that we want to, to do to build this island? Yes? Of course, we need food. Something else? Jobs, everything. We need electricity, uh, police, uh, schools, every, a lot of things. We, we can translate all of that into one thing. We need money. But the problem is, I spent everything to buy this island. Basically, I have no money. So what I thought is, uh, I thought about applying taxes to the people who live in that island. And we need as much money as we can get to build this island, of course. So here's the plan. For the first few years, we will take 100% of their income. Is that a good plan? Of course not. Because if we take 100% of their income, they will quit their job and basically they will stop working because we take everything that they make. So. Human satisfaction. Human satisfaction is really important. So we'll focus on human satisfaction, how to satisfy the people who live in that island. So we'll put taxes depending on their happiness. But the problem is what, what, what will make people happy is living without taxes. This is a very stressful problem. But math could make it easier. If we want to explain this problem, it's not a linear problem. It's not something that you can take the maximum or the minimum. The solution, the optimal solution, is somewhere in between. So I made this graph, and I hope it explains this situation well. As we see here, we have the amount of, ta of taxes in the x the axis, and the island growth in the y axis. At the beginning, if we put taxes at 0%, we'll have zero uh, island growth, since we will not take any money. And if we put the taxes at 100%, the maximum, also will ensure zero growth for that island, since they will quit uh, their jobs and we take everything that they make. 
So the optimal solution, I found that it could be somewhere in the middle, which is a nonlinear problem, which is 25% will ensure the growth of the island, also will make people somehow happy, since they will be knowing that the island is growing by their help. Those, the, uh, the two different problems of the math, the, the linear and the nonlinear. You see, I, I never understand math like this during my years in schools and college. It was only just a bunch of equations that has no meaning. But now I understand math. And I see how it's connected with everything, even our daily decisions that we make. So last advice for you, if you want to be a good leader, just do the math correctly. Back to you.